This is a video trip report for the upper North Fork of the John Day. This is the section of the North Fork that goes through the North Fork of the John Day Wilderness. It's about 40 miles, depending on where you take out. It's a trip I'd want to, have wanted to do for a while, and I was excited to do. And it was really hard to find good beta about what flows were good, what it was like. And I definitely had some hesitations going into it, because as you'll see, it's pretty continuous, and especially the beginning part, with wood. And that's something that definitely gives me pause. Uh, just really quick about these video trip reports. This is something I just do to sort of document a trip for somewhat my own needs, I guess, or just wanting to have it. I don't really want to write a trip report out. It takes me a long time to write where talking to a microphone is pretty easy. Uh, but also, if anybody wants beta, uh, you know, wants information to see what the trip is actually like and hear just from me what I thought after recently doing it. I'm going to forget most of this information, you know, two years from now, probably six months from now. So if people ask me, what was the flow? What was this? What was that? And this is my best way to like say, hey, here's the information as I remember it pretty soon after I did the trip. And yeah, I think some people just might enjoy watching this thing. So I, I do a few of these. If you don't want to hear my voice, you can turn the volume down uh, and just watch some of the, the paddling and the scenery. And again, we did quite a bit of research about flows and when to go. And I've been trying to do this for a few years. And I, you don't want to go too high because the section gets really continuous. And Jacob Cruiser wrote an article about him doing it, I think, at, at 3,200 CFS, which looked slightly terrifying. Uh, but too low, it would be really rocky and bumpy. And I wish we had gone lower, but we had a, a, t a window cut out. I uh, heard this was a good flow, so we went. And the flow on this day is about 2,500 CFS. Now, that's measured way downstream of Monument. So this we're on, like, whatever, four or 500 CFS now. But we're going to use the Monument gauge to talk about flows. It was about 2,500 on this launch day. The next day, it was about 2,300, I think, and even down to 2,100 the third day for our last day. And I would say if I went back, I'd want to launch for me maybe like 2,200. Uh, this was a bit continuous. I chose to take an inflatable kayak on purpose. Um, I kind of debated whether to inflatable kayak or hard shell kayak. And in general, on r runs that are woody, that are continuous, I want an inflatable kayak because I can just paddle to shore and jump out in a hurry. When I'm in a kayak, sometimes I can't get out of that kayak quickly above a log. And I like the ability, or if I hit a log, for example, in a ducky, I could just jump out really quick, where in a kayak, you could get pinned. So it was a debate. In retrospect, I probably t should have taken a hard shell. I think that would have been better here. This top section, you know, the, the rapids, it's pretty steep. It's 140, 50 feet per mile. See that where there's lots of wood like that, that's pretty easy to avoid. Um, it's pretty steep, but nothing is, I don't think any of the moves are harder than class three. Maybe it easy four. It's just so continuous. And so I'm going to say when it's this continuous, even though the moves are class three in difficulty, that's automatically class four to me. They automatically, just because the continuous nature. A swim here would be terrible. And, and mistakes tend to compound as they go on. And then the wood. I mean, there's dangerous wood, um, as you'll see, a lot of places. I'm going to say that moves up a half a step or maybe one one more. So I'm going to call this top section class four plus. And honestly, like even class five, you don't want to go into this casually. Um, our friend Doug, he walked the first few miles. We A really smart thing to do is get to the put in the night before. There's a campground there, a camp. And walk down these first three miles. See what you think of them. Definitely recommend scouting on foot. It doesn't take that long. It's a great trail. But also see where the wood is. You don't want to kind of haphazardly go into this knowing where there is and isn't wood. And you'll see some wood we knew about, and I ran into a piece later on that I, it just was barely under the surface I didn't know about. You want a lot of information about this top section. And again, a really easy scout. I think it was an hour and a half, beautiful hike uh, down the trail to see it. So I'm with Jan. It's just the two of us paddling right now. He's, he's up ahead of me in that, that pink kayak. And we're doing our best to stay together, but it is really hard to tighten up spacing or make more spacing. Uh, there's just, you can see there's no slack water. There really aren't eddies. You know, if I have to jump out of my kayak, it's not easy. And it's actually really unique. I've rarely been on rivers like this where there's just not good places to stop. I know there's a log downstream uh, just that I want to eddy out and walk around. I already planned that. Jan wanted to run it, which it, it was, there's a good line. There's a decent line. But I had already decided to walk around one of the logs. And there was some, this is, I think this is the island we go around. After this island, there was some pink tape somebody put on the shore, which may or may not be there in the future. There was sort of a signal saying, hey, that log's coming up. To me, that was a signal I had because we'd scouted. And so I was going to 
I, I did get out, you'll see. But you'll see it's hard to get out. I'm usually really good at paddling this ducky to shore and jumping out. But it's really hard to get out of the kayak. And I can't... I can't say this enough. Like, this this run is... I, I've done a lot of continuous boating in the past. I'm pretty used to it. Usually, even like continuous rivers, they're good eddies. This section is like a flush at this flow. Um, I've seen some video of it at lower levels. And it looks rockier. Like, you could, if you ran it, if there was something downstream, you had to stop where you get stuck on a rock or, you know, get out pretty easily. At this level, which today is about 2,500, it's not the most pleasant time to get out. So, anyway, I'm, just, I'm speeding this up because I could go on forever. Oh, there's the island. So, you go left of the island right there. And in Jacob's description, I read he went right of the island, but, you know, logs, logs change. And again, we're also one other note, we're at about 5,000 feet. And so you can get winded pretty easily on a river that's continuous. You can get tired pretty easily um, going on. So I'm now trying to get out and I'm having a hard time. You can see I'm backwards now. I've been trying to eddy out into small eddies. And with this brush on the side, and, and I know there's this log downstream. I can run it, but I don't want to. So I'm just looking for spots to stop, rocks to stop on. And I'm just really struggling finding a spot to pull over. And, you know, I'm not, it's fine if I have to run the log, it's, it seems to be good, but I really want to eddy out. And I find this spot, I think right here, where I'm able to pull over and just grab some brush. And that's what it takes. If you were swimming here, you'd have to grab brush, unfortunately. And so I get out here and have to drag my boat through a little bit of brush and then down the trail. I think I probably portage maybe like a quarter of a mile. And yes, yeah, so you have to drag it. It's not, this wasn't fun. Um, getting it through this stuff but i got to the trail and it's about a quarter mile walk down to do the portage and here i am after the portage uh and and yawn's ahead yawn went down he ran this ahead of me i don't know where yawn is again it's really hard to communicate with this kind of water it's hard to find each other and so i'm gonna assume he's in an eddy downstream kind of waiting for me uh it ends up he was he ran up the trail to try to find me and so there's, you know, he wasn't in an eddy. Uh, so I, but I knew that was a possibility, but we definitely reconnected. But you can see the log. I wasn't comfortable running to the left of that log. So I'm putting in right below it. This isn't easy. Like this is, you know, physically hard work, portaging this thing, getting it down to this tiny eddy. And now I'm sort of in the branches trying to launch. And I'm not stoked about not having downstream safety, about not having somebody downstream. But uh, we did portage, we did start on portage. We did scout this the night before. Um, I feel pretty comfortable in my ability to run run the rapids or downstream of this. So I'm gonna go downstream, hoping that yawn is close. Um, but I certainly feel exposed at this moment. You know, if I, there's nobody around, if I was to fall out, I don't really have rescue, but um, that's a choice I've made um, based on my comfort level in this water. Um, and. I felt pretty comfortable, but it's not a choice everybody would make. And and I could have walked down to find Yon and be, hey, where are you? But we also recognize we have to run a 15 plus miles of river today. So we don't have all day to do all these things we need to do. So I feel pretty good about this. And I think somewhere in here, I don't know, somewhere in here, I'd see Yon on the trail. Ooh, that was a nice hole. And, but I see his kayak on shore or something, and I pull over Netty out. But this is the nature of this run. I mean, it, it's, and the GoPro doesn't, it, we always say this, the GoPro doesn't do it justice. Like, it's definitely steeper and harder than it looks from the GoPro. It's not that hard. Like I said, this is generally, these are like class three maneuvers. Uh, I, think, I think I was just talking to you on there. These are class three maneuvers. They, they're not that hard. It's just, if you make a mistake and swim, swimming here would be awful. Like it would be really hard to get to shore. You can see there. I sometimes I had uh, there. I see on right there. He's like, yeah, he caught the first eddy he could. That was maybe the first eddy I could catch after I put in. There's just not a lot of places to to stop. I just I've said that a few times, but it's a big deal. I'm taking a second, putting air in my boat. I want to make sure this thing is top performance and see on ready to go and. We get going again. I jump in the lead. I feel again. I feel pretty comfortable um, knowing what's going on. And uh, this is this part was a little bit nerve wracking up here. 
again, just trying to stop in there. And yeah, just kind of heading downstream. We had, again, we had scattered most of this night before. We had looked downstream to see different things. There's there's an eddy, so I'm, I'm taking the time to sort of regroup and catch an eddy. Um, this is a rare, like easy eddy. So I felt like this was a good time just to take a break. So I'm regrouping with Yon here, which is nice. It's nice to be boating together, being to rhythm with the other person. And we just go down and boat. And this section is awesome. It's, as you can see, the scenery is amazing. It's high elevation, which is really cool. The cold water. You know, again, the moves aren't that much more difficult than class three. But the continuous nature of having them be back to back to back makes this pretty challenging. And then the constant lookout for wood. You know, we scattered this from the trail and we felt like we knew where the wood was, but there's wood everywhere. And as you can see here in a second, there was a log under the surface that I see at the last minute. And as I try to paddle away from it, I kind of snagged my boat on it. And this led to a hole, we got ropes out and got it figured out. It, it wasn't super dangerous, but um, once I got the boat back together, this is right below there. Um, it was time to start paddling. And man, for a second, I'm like, God, do I keep going? Do, like mentally, this is sometimes hard. Um, but you know, then those fluke things do happen. And I feel like, like we should, this is why we should boat with friends and boat tight with friends and people we trust. And you know, Jan is somebody that I like boating with and I trust and I know he'll look out for me. Um, and when I make decisions on who to go with and where to go, uh, I definitely like look for certain types of people who you know have the right backgrounds and have experience and can quickly jump out of their boats and be an asset. And man, that was so, so key here. So I felt good about it. We kept going. I let Jan take the lead this time. I, I didn't really want to go first. And, you know, you can see we're still paddling. There's wood here and there. We're paddling around. It's still really continuous, but also fun. It's such, it's a weird mix of like slight nerve wrackingness about the possibility of a swim or hitting a log with like, this is just really fun going downhill on continuous water. I can't remember why I got out there, but got back in the boat and we just keep going. And it's a great time. And now Dougie had walked the trail. Our friend Doug was our third partner. He, this part of the run we knew was the most difficult. He didn't like the look of it. And so he walked, I think two and a half miles down to a creek. This is me getting out right before the creek. Uh, there was a log downstream of the creek that I, I portaged again, this log. And um, yeah, so now we're past all that and the river varies between like class two and three continuous, but a lot of this. And then we get to a section where there's like a bunch of rapids, uh, but and a lot of wood too. And this wood had been here for a while. So these are, these are logs that if you run this section, you probably will see. And they're, you have to be heads up, they're, they're visible, um, but you, you, you gotta be on your game so you can like miss them in time and, and portage them. Um, here's Jan, um, Eddie, you know, he's, we just, we just portaged a log and putting in, this is like some pretty typical water, like fun class three, three plus, I'm um, just going downstream. We've taken on a bunch of creeks at this point. So there's more water. There's another log we ran into. Um, and you're just gonna have to be okay with that. And then we camped at this killer camp. We knew that around mile 14, there'd be a bridge and then Granite Creek would enter from the left and there'd be a rapid downstream. And so we pulled over and found this awesome camp and decided to camp just upstream of the creek. And we love this campsite. The nice thing is that the next morning we could just walk, do the portage. We decided to portage the rapid. This is Granite Creek Falls. It's it's runnable, but kind of nasty. We just woke up from the camp, walked our boats down and put it at the bottom. And this is the next rapid. We called this one mini jakes or micro jakes. I don't know, little jakes. This is probably the hardest individual rapid, but really fun, super doable, class four, four plus, great time. Uh, here's yawn in a different section below there. Um, and this is pretty, after that, after that big rapid, this is pretty typical white water and scenery. Maybe it, there's a few parts a little harder, but things definitely ease up a bit. And for this, again, this is day two. And so after mini jakes, I think that's what we called it. Just lots of stuff like this, just pleasant, but continuous It moved. It, you know, making 10, 15 miles isn't that hard. Uh, at some point, the road is next to you on river, right? There's some campgrounds. We found this little spot by the river next to the road. Um, the campsite wasn't as nice, but it was so semi-developed. You know, there wasn't a toilet, but there was. There are some campgrounds of toilets in the section, so you could depend on the toilet. Um, but we kind of wanted some solitude and, and really enjoyed this camp. And I like sleeping in my ducky. 
And so this is my ducky next to the fire. I thought this was kind of a fun artistic shot. Um, yeah, on the second night. And we really were excited to just spend time together and hang around the campfire and, and just catch up. Uh, the next day, uh, it's pretty easy. This is probably the hardest rapid. And it doesn't have a name. If, you, if anybody knows a name, I'd love to know it. It has, it has to have a name. I just don't know what it is. I can't figure out what it is. But it's a beautiful rapid, really cool geology, class 3+. plus. Um, in this little canyon and the river after this is pretty continuous and fun i just we just all really liked this rapid it was it was it was on our radar for like some hard rapid coming out so i think we were a little bit nervous but once we got there and saw it we're like oh that's just an awesome rapid and then from here on out it was just like class two ish to the takeout um you can take out there's several places to take out downstream uh there's several campgrounds down here so you can make up your own mind so that's it Hope you enjoyed this video trip report. Uh, if you're gonna go do this run, you're in for a really cool treat. It's pretty cool to go on a trip like this where you really don't see anybody else. There's some things to figure out on your own. This isn't a gimme, like you have to figure out some of the logistics and you have to get around logs and you have to scout some things and make some decisions. So it's a harder trip, but definitely worth it. And um, like I said, I would maybe go back a little lower flow, but that's just me. If I had a hard shell, if I was a really good, like, class 5-plus hard sheller, I'm sure any flow was fine. But uh, for me, like, I, that top part, that first two miles was pretty continuous and and a little nerve-wracking at times. And I'd love to take the edge off. It's a little bit lower flow. So that's it. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And, yep, yeah, thanks for watching.